Okay, tonight we're going to continue our evaluating limits at a point. So again, that's referencing finding the limit as x approaches c, where c is some number of a function f of x. First method is always substitution, which we talked about in the last video. If substitution leads to a number, great, that's your answer. If it leads to zero, awesome, that's your answer. If it leads to a number over zero, you look at your graph, and if it leads to zero over zero, that's what we call an indeterminate form. So that you're going to have to keep going. Now, there are other forms of indeterminate form, okay, things dealing with infinity mostly, that you'll study in other classes. But for right now, if substitution leads to one of these four things, you know what to do. By keep going, we mean simplify with algebra. So that might be factoring or multiplying by a conjugate. Again, there's other ways to use algebra also, but for this class purposes, we're going to focus on factoring and using the conjugate. But then it also helps to consider limits numerically. So using a table and using a graph, we're also going to use the table feature on our graph to help evaluate limits at a given point. So first thing, you really need to have your graphing calculator sitting next to you. You are going to need it to be filling out all of these values. Okay, fill in the table of values for f of x equals 3x minus 6 over x squared minus 4. So we want to plug in 1.9 in for x, then plug in 1.99, then 1.999, etc. You could do that, typing each one individually and doing things like 3 times 1.9 minus 6, all divided by x squared minus 4. Oops. For x, that's what we're doing here, I would need to type in 1.9, okay, and I get an answer of 0.769, we'll go with three decimal places, 0.769. Okay, well to do that for every single one of these is going to be pretty tedious. There is an easier way. If we look at our graphing feature, just go ahead and press y equals and type in our function 3x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 4 and press graph. Okay. Now, if you just press the trace button, not second trace, just trace, you can type in all of these values. So at 1.99. Our y value is 0.752. Keep typing at 1.999. We get 0 0.750. At 1.9999. We get 0 0.750 again. At 2, we get a blank space for y. This is not a Taylor Swift video. Our blank space means that at 2, our function is undefined. Okay. Continuing to fill out this chart, 2.001. Oops, that should be 001. We get 0 0.750 if you're rounding to three decimal places. Man 2.001, 0 0.750 again, if you're rounding. 2.01 is going to give us 0.748, and 2.1 is going to give us 0.732. Okay? Now, if you think about this, at 2, our function is undefined because when you plug in 2, you get 2 squared minus 4, which is 0. Okay, so that's why our function is undefined at that value. All right, so the next thing I want you to do is fill in the table of values for negative 2. Okay, we're approaching negative 2 from the left and from the right, which we'll get to in just a minute. Take the time to practice this on your calculator. So use your trace feature, fill in all of your values. Okay, for time's sake, I'm going to have you pause the video to do that and then check your answers with me. So go ahead and pause now.
Okay, so we started by setting up these tables, and we didn't really talk about why these tables are existing. So if we think about this, the center of this table is the value x equals 2. And as I'm getting numbers, 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, .9 etc., these are numbers that are getting closer to 2 from the left side of a number line. On this side, I've got numbers that are getting closer to being equal to 2 from the right side of a number line. So if you picture on a number line, here's 2. These are all numbers that are getting closer from the left, closer from the right. Well, when you think about x values approaching from the left and from the right, hopefully in your mind you think of finding the limit as x approaches 2. This table is going to help us do that. Likewise, this table written in green, which hopefully you filled out instead of just taking my answers, I'm coming in from the left, getting closer to negative 2, coming in from the right, getting closer to negative 2, which means all of these values should help me in evaluating a limit. So the limit as x goes to 2 from the left, using the table, from the left, it looks like I'm getting close to 0 0.750, okay? The limit as x goes to 2 from the right, x goes to 2 from the right, also going to 0 0.750. Because the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right, I can say that my overall limit as x goes to 2 is 0 0.750. And we'll confirm that in just a minute. So then using the second table, the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left, so here's negative 2, from the left, my y values are getting really big. So it's not just going to be negative 30,000, okay? If you kept getting closer and closer to negative 2, these values are just going to keep getting really big, but in the negative direction, so it's going to negative infinity. Coming in from the right, these numbers are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you get close to negative 2. So that's going to be infinity. Because the limit from the left does not match the limit from the right, overall our limit as x goes to negative 2 does not exist. Okay. Now looking at our graph, all of this makes sense, right? We've got a vertical asymptote right here and the limit as x... Uh -oh. Hold on. You don't want to see all of that. There we go. Okay. The limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left is going to negative infinity. From the right is going to positive infinity. So we can get all of this information from our table. We also learned, though, in our last video about how to evaluate limits algebraically. So if we look here, and I try to plug in 2, I'm going to get 2 over... 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 6, which is 0, over 0, so I have to keep going. Well, this is going to factor, and this is going to factor. Those are going to cancel 3 over x plus 2. Well, now when I plug in 2 for substitution, I get 3 over 2 plus 2, which is 3 fourths, which is 0.750. Okay, so you can use the table, or you can use your algebraic way, to help in solving this limit. Likewise, if you plug in negative 2 here, we're going to get negative 6 minus 6 over 0, which is negative 12 over 0. This means undefined, and we need to look at the graph, which we did, and we found that the limit overall did not exist because one part was going like this and the other like that. All right, fill in the table of values for h of x equals 3x minus 2 over 1 minus x. I want you to take the time to fill in these values. In fact, I'm not going to do them for you, other than to tell you that h of x at 1 is undefined. You need to fill in the other values, okay? Take the time and practice, so go ahead and pause your video right now to do so. So now using your table, you should see the limit as x goes to 1 from the left looking at these numbers, okay, they are getting really big in the positive direction, so this is going to be equal to infinity. Coming in from the left, looking at these numbers, you should see that they are getting really big, but in the negative direction, so this is going to be equal to negative infinity. 
Now, because we're going to infinity and negative infinity, overall the limit does not exist. And we know that there is a vertical asymptote at 1, because vertical asymptotes you're going to hit and go up or hit and go down. This also makes sense looking at our function here. 1 minus x is not a value that you can cross out, so it does not make a hole, it instead makes a vertical asymptote. Alright, graphically evaluate the limits. So we're going to just graph these on our calculator and see if we can read the limits just by looking at them or by using our table feature on our calculator. So, y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10 divided by parentheses x minus 2. Make sure you're always keeping things in parentheses. Go ahead and graph that. So if I trace this at 2, it's undefined, okay, which we would expect because of this x minus 2 on the bottom. If I move slightly to the right, I'm at 7.12. If I move slightly to the left, I'm at 6.9. Well, this is kind of hard to tell, so go ahead and look at your table. Okay, so if we go to second table set, we want our table to start at 2, because that's what we're interested in. And let's count by point ones so we get a good representation. This should say auto, this should say auto. Go ahead and press second table. And here we have our error at 2, which we would expect. 6.9 and 7.1 are on either side. A reasonable estimate for this limit by using our graph and a table would be 7. Okay. This next one, go ahead and graph this in your calculator. Minus 5 divided by x squared minus 25. So as x goes to negative 5, if you press trace, negative 5, undefined, okay, so if I move slightly to the right, I'm at 0.59, and slightly to the left, I'm at point, oops, oh, I'm at 0 0.604, so it would be reasonable to think that in between this is going to be about 0 0.6. Well, 0 0.6 as a fraction is going to be 3 fifths. If you look closer at your table, we want our table set to start at negative 5. You'll see that 0 0.6 is a very reasonable estimation for what that limit should be. Now, limits on your calculator can only get you so far. It would be better to evaluate these algebraically if possible, okay? Graphing should always kind of be your last resort. I take that back. Tables should always kind of be your last resort. It's okay to look at the graph just to get an overall, overall idea of what's going on. But really, you should be trying to solve these things with algebra most often. All right, last one I want you to try on your own. Go ahead and graph it. Pause, pause the video. Pause it now. Did you pause it? Did you really? Don't just wait for my answers. So here we have our graph, and I'm trying to evaluate the limit as x goes to negative 3. So if I go ahead and press trace, negative 3, I get a blank space, okay? Taylor Swift related, not so much. Blank space, if I move slightly to the right, if you notice my spider is right here. So negative 3 is not this vertical asymptote. It's just a hole that's happening. And slightly to the right, I'm at negative 7.9. Well, to help us get a better look, if you go to your table, okay, you might have to go table set negative 3 or negative 3.3 in this case, then table. Here's our error message at negative 3. Well, coming in from this way, I get negative 9, and from this way, negative 11. So it would be reasonable to say that this limit is equal to negative 10. If you were to go through and factor this and get rid of the hole that's causing the problem, you would in fact find that the limit when you do substitution is negative 10. So again, a limit, whether it's solving with substitution, algebra, table, or graph, it's as x gets close to a number, 
what is your y value getting closer to? It doesn't have to be defined at that value, it's what are you approaching from either side. The limit, limit from the left has to equal the limit.